What's up, everybody? I'm back. I'm wearing a Jurassic Park shirt. I replaced the old one that I got at Universal with a new one I found at Target. And I think there's only a good reason why I'm wearing this shirt, and that's because I just got home from seeing Jurassic World Dominion, the sixth and final entry into the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World series. Uh, release was supposed to come out last year, 2021. Got delayed to this year because of COVID. Uh, I know it's a few days late. I just went and saw it um, just because it was available. And I'm going to give my review on it because there's a lot to talk about here. I've been waiting to do this review for years. Now, finally get the opportunity. Um, <laughs> I didn't have the highest expectations coming into this movie. Um... I did not watch any trailers outside of ones that were on TV. I did not look up any lore about it or anything like that. I kept very quiet about this so that I could go in, the fresh look, everything. People told me, though, it was bad. And, you know, they're kind of right. They're, they're, they're pretty much right. Uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's, not, it's not anywhere on the level of the first two or Jurassic World as a movie. It's just a big cash grab. Uh, however, it is, it's still enjoyable. It's like the Bob's Burgers movie it's to a point. You, know, you can enjoy it even if you don't really, it's not really a good movie. But there's a lot to talk about. Um, and one of the big draws for this movie was obviously uh, Laura Dern, Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum being on the same screen with Claire Deering, Owen Grady, uh... And all these others. I, that was the big point. Like we knew they were gonna be there. We knew they were gonna be there. We knew they were gonna be in the game, in the in the movie, not the game. <laughs> um, we knew they were gonna be there. Um, and it was it kind of pissed me off because they actually didn't like meet on screen. Uh, Owen, Claire, uh, Doctor Grant, Sadler, Malcolm, whatever. They didn't actually meet on screen together until like the last 30 40 minutes in the movie it's a, it, this is by, as also by the way this is the longest of the movies in the Jurassic Park series all the rest of them I know uh, most of them were around two hours uh JP3 was an only an hour and a half this one was almost was two and a half hours so that's a, that's the longest one um <clears throat> and so they didn't actually meet till like the last 30 40 minutes in the movie it's a little disappointing for me uh Maisie comes back the girl and <laughs> Her role's kind of up and down. She plays the angsty teen because, you know, it's later. She's like a teenager now. Uh, and we learn more about her mother's backstory and who actually made Maisie, uh, which ended up being her mom and not uh, Ben Lockwood like we thought about, thought it was in Fallen Kingdom. She learns more about that and what happened and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we learned some of that from, from Wu. You know, Dr. Henry Wu comes back again. Uh, he's got long hair now, and he's kind of like more laid back. Does not play like a big antagonist role uh, in this movie. Fine by me. I didn't really care for Wu. He didn't play a huge role. A lot of people thought he was going to die. Did not die. Got injured, but did not die. Um, so, don't know why that was. Uh, probably because he was such a long-standing character, though. Um, and then who else? We got Barry comes back from Jurassic World. Uh, he comes back, yeah, plays a, like, kind of like he did in Jurassic World, kind of smaller role, but still very well known, right? Uh, and then we get mentions, right? We get mentions of both Lowry and the other girl that worked in the control room in Jurassic World. We get mentions of them. Uh, they're named, they're mentioned in the files. They're never actually shown on screen, though. That's that's a little weird, but it's okay, whatever. I mean, they didn't play that big of roles in the movie, and they probably would have just played the same role Barry did, you know, kind of just there in that big uh, police, like, scout-out scene, whatever. So it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, I, w I wish I could have seen at least Lowry, though. That would have been very cool uh, to see his change in character. That would have been pretty awesome. But, um, and then we get also uh, a couple other small, but the big one, that guy that comes back, this blew me away. That this guy came back, and that is Lewis Dachshund. So, like, InGen's not even a thing anymore. And that was huge, because InGen was the big company, right? But now it's Biosyn. We knew all along that Biosyn existed. 
but they play a huge role in this one because now they're the company that takes control of the dinosaurs. They're the company making the advancements, and they're led by Lewis Dodson, who we see for like five minutes in the first movie, heard nothing about. If you read the books, which play no part in this actual like uh, things, he plays a huge role in the books. Does not play any much of a role here outside of uh, a little bit of exposition in the first movie. Like That is it. But he comes back, and not only does he come back, he's literally a main character. He's literally the main antagonist of the fucking movie. And <laughs> one of the funniest moments, uh, there's a lot of hilarious moments that have no business being as hilarious as they are. Uh, but one of them, when he finds out that everything's going to shit, and he's like trying to get everything fixed, he just goes like, <laughs> like that. It's like so silent. Like that. It's just literally dead silent. And for no reason, uh, but it's hilarious, hilarious, because he fits that role perfectly. It's like this, like little scrawny, smart guy with no brain, brawn, anything. Uh, I love his death scene, though. There's not a lot of good death scenes in this movie. There's not a lot of deaths either. I can only think of three off the top of my head. We'll get to the. Uh, it was Louis Dawson, a random guy on a moped in Italy, gets eaten by an allosaur. And another guy we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but look, it was such an amazing callback. This movie's full of callbacks, by the way. Tons of callbacks from the first movie. Even the second movie. Uh, get some even from the third movie. When Claire's landing off the plane into the to the nature reserve or whatever. That's a callback to the third movie. Um, you even get callbacks to Jurassic World. And even there's something... That's, that starts in the first movie and then plays again in Fallen Kingdom. Then they're bringing down the hatch as the raptor runs at them. Uh, that's part of that. The Barbasol can comes back. Uh, Lewis has recovered the Barbasol can from Nublar. Um, and has it like a little artifact on his thing. Um, and he brings that. He hides things in that. And then goes to, to escape uh, the, the, the scene. And he gets... And then the Lophosaurus attack... What a scene! I loved that scene because he needed to die. I knew it, knew the minute he, minute he was established, he was gonna die. Like he was, there was no way he was gonna survive this movie, especially being the last movie in this series. Um, and calling it back to the way with the 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 Barbasol can and the Dilophosaurus scene, how it played out the same way as Nedry died in the first movie, and how that really worked out. That was played on so so well. Absolutely enjoyed it. Um, the other major death scene is from this other guy. Um, so, like, the main plot of this, this movie, right, is, like, there's a, a di Biosyn setting up this, like, dinosaur sanctuary in Italy, of all places. It's a really weird place to set it up. But, um, they're bringing dinosaurs because uh, they're spreading all over the world. You know, we see the Moe's sword at the beginning get to kill on, on the guy in the Alaskan boat. And then, uh, he gets a bunch of people off because of that. And then, but... Uh, they actually capture uh, Blue, who had an offspring, which is really cool. Uh, and then they capture Maisie, because she's needed for research on how she was made. Uh, so she's kidnapped and actually brought over there so that they go get her. Um, and the guy who leads the operation to kidnap her, when they go into this like dinosaur black market, right? These dinosaurs are literally being sold on the black market. And he gets falls into this pit, right? And he looks like Morbius to me. Looks like like uh, I want to say John Cena, not John Cena. It's a uh, Keanu Reeves mixed with Morbius, right? And he like falls in this pit, and uh, a baby Carno grabs one of his hands, and uh, I think it's a lymph Lystosaurus grabs his other hand. So he's pinned there, and then a a Baryonyx comes down, and just chomps on his face. Really good scene because he's fighting with Owen during that scene as well. It's during like the busting scene where all the all the dinosaurs escape the black market, the holding area. You got a big Carno and Aloe, and a bunch of smaller dinosaurs also get out and stuff like that. That was a that was a pretty good action scene I thought. Full of a lot of inaccurate stuff, not as much as we're gonna get to a little bit later here. Um, but I thought that was a good scene. I thought that guy was gonna play a little bit more prominent of a role though. Uh, the kidnapping of Maisie really didn't was kind of quick in my opinion it didn't really get played on that much and it really didn't even make any sense uh so uh but you know what are you gonna do about that um 
There were some badass scenes in this one, too. Of course, we get the Lothosaurus coming back for the first time since the first movie. I thought that was really good. Um, and we get uh, another new dinosaur that we get is the Therendorizer, Theros and the Source. That comes into the movie for the first time. Um, and the big one that we get first time, literally the big one, is uh, the, the Giga, Giganotosaurus, uh, who plays, uh, I wouldn't say a main antagonist role. There's no... <laughs> So there's no one dinosaur that really plays a big antagonist in this movie. We get to see Blue a little bit. We get to see Rexy a little bit. We can see these new dinosaurs. We get the Giga, the Renorizer, uh, all this sort of stuff. We get to play, see all those. Um, but none really play a role because the main non-human antagonist are a bunch of, what are they called? Um, locusts. They're a bunch of locusts. That are eating up the crops so that Biosyn can take over the entire food chain and market it and make money off of it. So they genetically engineered these, 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 uh, oh, fuck, I already forgot what they were called again. Uh, Laura, I'm calling them the, the bug things, right? And they, so they genetically engineer them to not die. They're not dying, but they can easily remultiply. And then they're coming around and just, you know, killing crops and stuff. And they... <laughs> they're not dinosaurs! How do you... <laughs> Makes absolutely no sense that why they would do that. But, okay. It's just one of those things, like, you have all these great dinos, ones they've already shown, and ones that you have brought in, and you have... Locusts. There they are, locusts. That they already bring in. That's so weird. Um, an odd part of the movie that I would never think of. But as far as the... And they also... Going back to the characters for a second, they do bring in some new characters uh, along with the original cast. Now, I'd say Maisie doesn't play huge... Maisie, Claire, Owen... I mean, they, and then some the play role. Dr. Grant doesn't play any role at all. He could not be in the movie at all, and it wouldn't have changed the storyline of the movie at all. Uh, Malcolm, I love Malcolm in this movie. I love him in all of those movies. Uh, there's an assistant that uh, works with Malcolm. Um, his name's Ramsey. We get a very weird return of the two char new characters from Fallen Kingdom who had no reason to be there. No reason. They, I could have loved this movie had they not been in this movie. Uh, but we get the, the the girl. She's in the opening scene when they get rescue the Cenoceratops. Literally, it. She's not mentioned, shown, heard from at all, at all. So, what? And then we get uh, Franklin, who actually does play a somewhat significant part. Um, he. Uh, is working for the fucking, like, FBI now or whatever, and he gives them special access to, to get on this undercover situation. It makes absolutely, absolutely no, no sense at all. <laughs> I could have not, they could have not been in there, uh, and I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have cared. They, they mean nothing to me. Yeah, um, anyway, um, and then there was, and then Sattler, she plays an all right role, um, there's a lot of characters, so not a lot of them get to be, let's talk about some of these badass scenes that were supposed to be badass, they just ended up being impractical, one that actually really was badass was, uh, when, uh, Owen makes, um, uh, a Dilophosaurus choke on its own spit, and then, like, runs away. And then another one. I thought that was actually really epic. That was really, really cool. And then... And then the Giga comes along at one point And... Gets... Um... The Giga comes along. And they're all, like, climbing up this, like, observation tower or whatever. And this thing... And Malcolm literally impales a flaming... Uh... I already forgot what that... Locust. A flaming locust impales it with a stick. And throws it into the Giga, impaling into the Giga, does not affect him at all, okay? Does not affect the Giga at all. And the Giga breathes fire back into the air. What are we in China now? It's like dragon breathing crap. 
And then, and then we get the freaking, um, and then in that same scene, the Giga tries to break through into the observation deck, and Owen takes this, like, steak knife, and literally is beating it, stabbing it to death in the head. And it works! It works! It works! How does it work? And then Claire takes taser, by the way, a taser is the most effective weapon in this entire movie. They're tasing people, they're tasing dinos, they're tasing gigas, it's working! And it works! A taser in the eye goes away! <laughs> How? So dumb! Oh my god. But hilarious, nonetheless. Uh, um, the line that got me laughing the most, outside of the Dotson rage moment, uh, was when they were was when Grant and Sattler were talking about Malcolm before, because they talk about Malcolm for like fifth for like an hour before he actually shows up on the screen, um, making it making people who haven't don't know anything going into the movie, because I knew it a little bit, I didn't know a lot, but I knew a little bit going into the movie, think that Malcolm's not even going to be there because they talk about him so much, but don't actually show him. Uh, before he actually comes on screen, and Grant's like, "Well, how did how did you and uh, Malcolm how did Malcolm find you? You know, you guys uh, a little intimate or whatever." He's like, and she says, and she responds with, "He slid into my DMs." Fifty-something-year-old Laura Dern saying he slid into my DMs, talking about Malcolm, who's not young either. Oh my god. Oh lord. So many things that they... Corny jokes that they play. This movie's full of references to old movies and corny jokes. And an epic uh, Giganotosaurus T-Rex fight scene. They bring Rexy back, obviously. And uh, they fight. And they had me fooled. I thought they were going to kill Rexy off. Uh, because it looked like she did. It was the last movie. I thought, well, they're going to end it. They're going to kill off the thing that started it. And then she didn't Therenorizer impales the Giga uh, with its claws. Pretty epic scene, uh, mind you. I, I really, really enjoyed that scene. Uh, seeing Rexy survive. That was very, really cool. Um, and there's... And I mean, and then another inaccuracy, they made a Pyroraptor, another new dinosaur that they bring in the movie. They can make it swim! It swim good! So many stupid inaccuracies in this movie. But it's like Fallen Kingdom, but actually more enjoyable because it has a lot of like things that aren't supposed to be funny but are funny. Um, it, to, to describe it more without making this like a three hour long review, uh, go. How about you just go and uh, watch it yourself? <laughs> or no, or maybe just, or, or, or maybe pirate it online, something like that, so you don't actually pay money to watch this. <laughs> For my final review, though, I'm probably have to give it a five out of ten. And all five of those points are coming from the funniness and some dinosaur sequences. There were some good ones. Of course, the opening scene was really epic too. I forgot to talk about that. The Cenoceratopses and whatever that was really cool too. Um. So that was really, really nice uh, to talk about. So um, then, of course, Blue. Blue plays like no role in this movie whatsoever. That kind of sucked. I wish we got more Blue in this movie. Um, but whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah, five, five, I'll, give, I'll bump it up to a six. How about that? I'll give you bonus points for being a Jurassic movie. Give you a six. Um, it's fourth. It's definitely fourth out of six in my the Jurassic rankings for me. Um, it's better than Fallen Kingdom and JP3 for me, but not as good as the other three. Who are superior. That's like a top three and then the lower three. And they're like this much gap separating them. <laughs> uh, but that's my review. I can go watch some other people talk about it now. Since I've seen it myself. And I can play the Dominion expansion. Of the Chaos Theory of Jurassic World Evolution 2. And I can get uh, back into start getting back into the lore. Because I don't have to worry about spoilers anymore. And thank you guys for watching this review. Stay tuned for much more amazing content coming to you. Maybe more movie reviews. We'll see. Till next time. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.